Hi guys, I picked up this Centenary Collectors Club uh, overall logo and I wonder what shall I do with it. So it's red, which isn't typically a great Western Railway colour, but this logo is based off the 101 class logo, which is a fantastic logo. But it has a load of moulded features and various bits and you think, well, we should do more with this. What can I do? My thoughts are that we could add some details. Be good, right? Yeah. So we're going to do that. First, we remove the body and there are two clips each side. And once you compress them in on this model, it falls apart. The chassis is off. Next step is to remove the details that we don't want. So I want to get rid of the hooks, which is great. Do the front and rear and then cut off the buffers. The buffers, I want to replace them with some sprung buffers, which would be brilliant. And anything that I do add to this logo, I'll add in the description below and you'll be able to get them yourself if you want. Whether it's in your budget, there might be some other options out there if you want, or you just leave them on the logo because they don't look too bad to begin with. But using clippers and a scalpel, I work the levels down till they're flush so then we can't see them. And I might even use a file where needed. As well as the buffers and hook, we're going to take off the smoke box door handles. And we're going to add in some fantastic um, little brass ones, which look great. With that removed, we then slice very carefully so we don't go and mark the body, the moulded in handrails. And they really do they kind of bring the look to more the, the kind of toy look when it's all moulded in. And I understand why it was done. This mould was done years ago, but we can make this look better with some really, really easy methods, which will just be some standoffs and some nickel silver rod. After I did that, I needed to clean up any flash lines, and there were a few mainly around the front. The rear seemed really fine, and so I just carefully did that. Then there's the rear bunker that's on the back of the engine, and there were some handrails there, so I thought remove them. After that's done, I needed to bore out the size of the hole using a reamer, so we reamed it, and it's a tapered reamer which starts out small and it gets bigger as you push the reamer in and twist. Once that's in, we'll check the fit of our sprung buffer, and doesn't that look good? It's almost too good to paint, right? So I need to do that on all four of them, and you need to tune those fits. So you work your way around until it fits nice and snugly in place, and hopefully on centre with the old original hole that was there. Obviously, once it's glued on, you'll be feeling, ah, oh, it's not in the right place. Take your time. That's okay. Put it in the right place. With the handrail, again, we're going to put some little holes in here. And these holes are going to be for these standoffs. So they're little brass standoffs. You can normally buy them in packs of, let's call it 12 or 20. Can't remember offhand, but they're really handy. You will see here, drilling a hole there for the smoke box door handles. And that really be good once it's on there and I'm just going to glue in these standoffs and take your time with these you're going to make sure the holes are pointing the right directions and on a couple of them they weren't pointing as straight as I wanted so I had to pull them back out and have another go luckily it's only a bit of metal glued into plastic you can get it out again just take your time that's the key bit with all of this I didn't rush through this I did a bit each night after work just enjoying myself but here I'm going to add the new hook details I'm going to put some white metal hooks in there but to make the groove, because I needed to make a slot, I used the drill and I kind of went in a way that probably isn't the best way, but I just kind of was twisting the drill around a little bit until I could elongate that hole to get it just looking good and right. And then once it's the right size, you can poke your hook in and you have a hook on there. I'll even add some chain afterwards. You can get some of the Hornby ones, which uh, is R7200, and that has the chain all built into it. It looks pretty smart, but they're kind of a little bit dear for what I wanted to spend, and you could buy a pack of these, and I have enough to do loads of locos. So I thought, fine. Initially, if you only ever did one loco, you'd be spending a bit of money on this. But if you did lots of locos, a lot of the packs you buy include lots of you know, you've got your steam um, vacuum pipes that are here. Um, there, you know, you get a pack a bunch of them, so you can use them on lots of locos. And then white metal, you know, you get a whole bunch of mouldings. Whereas the sprung buffers, you get four for this, so you only buy what you need. But they're quite expensive. I think they were seven pound fifty. You could just use some normal buffers, and they'd be absolutely fine. But now we're moving over to putting the nickel silver wire in, and we're going to use some rocket glue to hold it in place. Rocket glue is fantastic. Uh, I use the thick 
uh, rocket glue that's out there and it doesn't run all over the place I put it just where I want it to like here and I'm going to pull it back it'll pull it up into the inner bores um, or where the holes are on the standoffs it's going to dry and I normally just rub my finger across it to take out the excess glue that's there and it will look great once you snip it off because it's only nickel silver it's nice and soft we get a file out we'll just clean up the very top edge of it so then each time we do this it just looks smart and neat so when we paint it we don't regret what we didn't do and then come back down with these standoffs and you just work your way around so these are the handlebars then you have the the, the kind of the grab rails as i guess the driver might want to or the fireman and um, work his way around the loco so that's that the one that i was going to be a bit intimidated by was the one that goes on the front of the loco we've got to bend a u-shape as well as have it um going down the side of the smoke box area but we get there eventually but the main thing is just again take your time and normally the packs of nickel silver you have plenty of them with doing this we have to go around the u and go back but i need to make sure the standoff is over um, the U first before I put it on. So using a round tool it's helpful you can generate a round shape to begin with is the front of the smoke box and you'll see what I'm doing here created a nice little loop that looks about right but if you're not too happy with that you can get it back onto a smaller arbor let's say and you can make it smaller again so I post on my standoff so it's going to live here now and I'm going to create some right angles and it's not a two second job you'll probably end up bending it a few times to get what you want and to be honest there's a chance you might end up ruining your first piece there'll be all sorts of bends that you're not happy with and you'll be thinking oh this is terrible you can always start again though you get plenty of nickel silver in these little packs so just go for it just look up nickel silver rod or even brass rod there's various options out there of what you can use I think you can even get foster bronze rod if you really wanted to so it's worth having a go have a look on the various auction sites or even go to some of the model shops that sell these things as you can see here we're creating some bends and then we bend it back because i realize i've gone a bit too much here but as you go through it's trial and error and it's all about learning like this skill is going to help you with certain other locos you're going to work on in the future if you haven't done this sort of thing before well great this is the time to learn you're going to use your 040 which if you do then get into the hobby more and more you might end up not using as much on your layout you might decide no i just not have the details i want but now you can you know you can kind of introduce that detail to it in your own way that you have little style areas that you want to make it just look better uh, for me it's going to be teaching me kind of core skills and i might not even be doing that right but the more you do this stuff the more you learn now i'm sticking off the smoke box <laughs> door handles um i always struggle saying these uh, four words together but anyway if we're dropping that on there we have the first handle and all i do is i drop a little bit of glue to then set it in place and then we stick on the second one it's as simple as that and then we cut off the excess i'm going to go and out a camera view here but i promise you i'm not uh, hiding anything i promise so that's in place that looking tidy we just need to snip off that excess and then we'll be good now where the bunker is at the back I wanted to block these little holes that are left for where the bunker clips on because I'm going to be taking off an area of the bunker that I feel is unneeded so using what is green stuff modeling putty there's lots of brand names for it that will cover it up but go hard and then you can paint it black if you want to I'm now happy with this we've got the rail on we've got the details on that kind of to sum up has brought that detail to it you know what else can we add to this logo i'd like to add some lamp irons but they haven't come in the post yet so i'll be adding them on later in the video so looking at this i've rubbed out some of the logo i didn't want that showing through when we paint it and then here's the bunker the bunker has been kind of separated from that flat area that helped clip it in before and so with this I'm going to be adding coal eventually to it and then we're going to be gluing it in but we're going to add some people as well and I've got some people from Monty's Models this is the right hand loco driver um, guy um, and as you can see he's a bit tall for the cab but once he's inside it's actually it's all right you just can't see out the very edge so he's gonna to have to crouch slightly when that happens but him the fireman I'm sure will fit in very very happily 
Now I wanted to mask off the one bit that I wanted to really really keep which is the 100. Even though this is modelled off the 101, something about this keeping it as a 100 makes me show where this came from, you know, this project, and it has been a project, um, kind of needs to have something of it remaining to show me, you know, what this was. It's not just a 101 that I've bought and painted green, because I'm going to paint this green, you think, why don't you just buy one that's already green? Well, where's the fun in that? You know, I want to learn, I want to practice painting logos. But talking about painting, we're going to paint the guys as well. So we've got our loco crew, and I normally stick them on a block of wood, which I then have um, some blue tack on which holds them and they don't fall off which is wicked and so then I'll paint them so using the airbrush and some primer as well as some flow improver we then give them a nice coat of primer including the body here and again I've put them on cocktail sticks um, with some blue tack inside them and then I can just hold them up I was somewhere to put them when they're drying because you don't want to be handling it with your fingers that'll be causing you some trouble but with the white primer going on we crack on and get it done. I like to open up the room or the window. I like to have lots of ventilation going through. I do have a spray booth, um, but it's noisy and yeah, maybe I should use it. But I'm using acrylic, so I know it's less harmful for me than the normal uh, ones, but fine. Here is the other color I'm gonna put on. So we had a primer. Now I have the Great Western Railway um, Post Green. Uh, it's Post 1928 by Railmatch. I find it's very dark, I always feel like it needs to be a bit brighter once I've painted them. They always look a little bit darker than the models that I buy. Um, but it still looks good. Lovely deep green that's there. Do the bunker as well. Lots of coats it requires, you can't just go and spray it with one coat. Take your time. Um, after that, I want to add some cab details, you know, some brass handles here and there and some pipes and I know that was kind of exciting for me, even where you have some of the dials, I painted them white, so it kind of represents the uh, the gauges. Then we've got our dome, I'm going to paint that nice brass colour. I'll go back over the chimney with some uh, copper uh, later on, just to finish that off. I actually started with brass to begin with and then I realised, no, no, we need to make it copper. You know? So. As you can see here, you know, in between coats of other things drying, I wanted to paint the regulator handle white and then I was going to add some red afterwards. So whilst painting this area, I will be adding some red onto that regulator. I'm using the Vallejo paints now. Um, they got easy to use pots. They work. They're reasonably thin and I can thin them down a little bit more when I'm painting. And I do a couple of coats until I get that consistent colour. Um, no blotchiness going on. You don't want to be able to see the primer through it. And now using my uh, Kalinsky brush, um, these are really, really nice um, because they hold a certain shape to the bristles as you do it and the handle's got a good ergonomic feel, let's say. Um, so I love using these and I picked them up by chance at a model shop, I didn't really know what they were, but I've been really, really enjoying them ever since. I've been asked what brushes I use. Um, again, I should probably put something in the comments below, not the comments, but the description, and you'll be able to see what I use. But taking my time with the brush, bit by bit, I'm going to put some thin coats on. I always like to thin it down, so then I can come back in later and add another coat. And it means you don't lose detail. That's the nice thing about thin coats. If you're using enamels, just mix it with a little bit of white spirit, and then you, again, you've got your thinner coat. And it won't hurt you to do that. It'll look wet and shiny, and you think, oh, this will never dry. It dries, and it'll be nice and flat as well as you have your detail. Now on to my little people. Um, we've got Jim and Bob, we call them, and they're ready to get a paint job. Gone for my dark blue colors. Again, take your time, do a couple of coats of thin paint, and then you get to keep that detail that's on them. Though they'll be in the engine and you won't be able to see too much, especially when it's whizzing around the track. So, fine. But you just take your time. I try and leave certain areas so then I can paint them the different colours and not have to paint over the top of the blue. Obviously I'll be um, probably putting some kind of darker tone of grey on where their shirt will be. Uh, give them some black shoes and obviously we'll paint their skin afterwards. This is always a difficult thing to do and I like to use on the skin. Um, it's the Skilliman flesh tone uh, which is from the Citadel paints bit. Whereas the blue, I just kind of mix up a darkish kind of blue I don't really know what colours they used to wear back in the day, I try and look up pictures, but they're generally in black and white. Um, though I should probably ask someone that's a bit more informed and educated on this than me. I'm sure they'd tell me they wore brown uniforms, and I'm like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> but I believe it would be something like a blue, um, that's the kind of stereotypical colours that we see. 
But here I'm just trimming off the couplings because I wanted to put some smaller couplings on because these ones are big. And I kind of like the smaller kind of, you know, the non-standout ones. So I bought some of these little ones that you can see here on the screen. Um, and I'm going to stick them on, you know, cut down their mounting area. And I'm sure they'd be good. The large Hornby ones, I, I get why they're there. I guess it's so you can go around these big tight corners. It's easy to couple and stuff like that. But I kind of like these small ones um, that you see on the more, let's say, the highly detailed logos. And I get it. And it's all part of the mould tool. So you need to trim it off, work out the height and stick it on. So that's something that you're going to spend a little bit of time figuring out. Or you leave it how it is. If you're happy with it, go for it. Who's judging? No one. You've just got to do what you want to do for your layout, really. So I stick them on and uh, just take your time with this. So they're pointing in the right direction and they're all horizontal. They don't have any weeping characteristic to them. They're angling down. So with that done, I wanted to add a little bit of weight. And I had this kind of, it's a fishing putty. Um, and it's got a weight that I guess they add to their bait. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I don't do fishing. But you can buy this stuff. There's loads of options for these types of things. You can buy, um, I think it's liquid gravity or something like that. They have all these little balls in a liquid and you can pour in and you glue in place. But I've put it everywhere. And I even put some other stick-on weights inside the body. Just to add that extra bit of weight. So when my loco is running around as it's only got four wheels to pick up from it should have a bit more chance to run smoothly when you're running really really slow with the bunker we have our coal load we're not going to use that but we're going to use the little corner of plastic which is on the side which has got our um, brake handle one and I didn't like the one that's on it um, it might be the one that should be on it but I wanted to add one of these spinny roundy ones as you can see here it's a white metal one and you can buy a pack um, mine had four inside it. There's a chance I might not put everything in the description, but I went on dark castings and Peter Spares for most of the parts that I used, and you use parts from markets um, in various other companies. I'll add the kind of the names and everything underneath. So have a little look. It's really interesting, and they don't cost a lot, and you can do a lot of your locos once you've done it, which for me is very nice to know that I've got some others to use but now we're gonna stick in Jim he's our driver for the day he's gonna kind of grab the regulator um, and afterwards we're put in the fireman but first I want to put in the bunker the bunker you know I was a little bit worried at how well it's gonna sit down because before it's gonna clip in with the rest of the lower level but that was fine once that was dry we're gonna stick in Bob he is our fireman and he's done his work for the day so he's going to be looking out the window but he's going to be holding onto his shovel at the same time we're going to put a little bit at the bottom of the shovel and on the handle and as you put him in he'll be absolutely fine and hopefully as long as i don't drop this model which would be a disaster that will stay there forever ready for um bob to do lots of his fireman's work after this i'm just going to use my paintbrush to put some black paint on the fire well, the, the, the handle the hand brake i'm looking for words all the time when we talk about these things and once that's done uh, we can have a bit more fun i'm going to put some glue in the bunker and we're going to put some coal in which is lots of fun so i like to put a big splodge in to begin with and then i use a paintbrush to kind of share around i like to use an older paintbrush not my fancy paintbrushes you can use any paintbrushes to do your modeling it's just when you've been doing it for a little while sometimes it's nice to pick up the odd fancy one here and there because they feel nice after that i shovel my own coal in and i pour it in bit by bit by bit and we go on top once that's done, we're going to want to use some isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to put a tiny, tiny bit um, across kind of three points on top of all of that and it will kind of go through and it'll get rid of that surface tension. So when we put some watered down PVA glue onto this area as well, it's going to lock it all in place absolutely perfectly without kind of shiny kind of lumps of glue sitting on top because that's probably not what we're going for, right? So that's pretty handy. Now we're just going to glue on the um, vacuum pipe on the back. I'd been wondering how this is going to sit, but I think it will sit like this. And just, again, rocket glue. It's nice and thick, and it will do the job. It just requires a steady hand and to be sure of what you're doing. After this, one of the really enjoyable bits is putting on some press fix um, uh, transfers. And it's as you say here. Um, you get them off the piece of paper, which has other transfers on. You cut down half the thickness of the card thickness 
you then literally just press it on with your fingers and then once that's pressed on you use some water on a brush and that kind of releases the paper from the transfer and it's very very simple we get our tweezers out once it's obviously soaked through uh, we just have to make sure you've got enough water on there, otherwise you'll put it back off and you peel it off it's this easy look oh, if I can just grab it there it is got a corner bit by bit great Western Railway how would you like that it's good do both sides and it's looking smart but I don't have my um, lights you know my lamp irons and that's a simple brass kit and I brought three packets of these because I was thinking I wouldn't have many on there but there are loads and they'll do more than one loco quite happily I'm gonna have four lamp irons on the front I've already got some kind of molded on ones on the rear in hindsight maybe I could have used this to do you know replace the ones on the rear to make it really stand out but get these out they're just straight pieces and you bend them 90 degrees once they're bent we glue them on again a bit of rocket glue that comes out and I stick it on with a shaky hand <laughs> it's they're so small um, the logo has not got masses of weight to it and I use stick it on um, I wasn't happy with how the first one stuck on so I do come back later and kind of make them all lined up but when I'm recording it with a camera it's always a little bit tricky to try and get these things right but I was really enjoying myself because these really made it stand out and the one that stood out the most is the one that went on the top of the smoke box I don't know why but it was just like yeah that looked awesome now and again like I said about the buffers it's almost a shame to paint them because they really stand out but I need to paint them so I get out my Vallejo um, black paint and I work my way over with a brush I thought that I was not going to touch onto the red so just you know when you're doing this if you do something like this afterwards just take your time otherwise you're going to have to paint the red bits again which isn't very fun. To finish this all off I wanted to put some satin varnish on this and just give it kind of a, a slight shine without that gloss kind of <laughs> look. I don't want it to look like it's got lacquer all over it. So I'm going to take my time and I do a couple of coats until I'm happy and that I feel I've put on a solid amount it will hold your transfers on it will also stop kind of those greasy fingers causing trouble now to recap we've turned it from this wonderful red beast into a glorious great western railway liveried loco and I'm honestly pleased with it so the next step is to give it a run and I'm going to take it to my father's wonderful railway 